There, there are a number of companies that offer these multi-gene panels, and there are slight differences between them. Um, one of the companies in Vitae, one of the things that's nice about them is they have a number of different customizable panels as well, and they let you choose which genes you want to put on and add or do a whole 29 gene panel or even greater number of gene panel. Um, and often what I find particularly useful is to, if you have a family where you think BRCA1 and BRCA2 is, is the likeliest thing to, first of all, get BRCA1 and BRCA2. Um, and if that's negative, to think about adding genes or just focusing on the higher penetrance genes. So six genes, or maybe you're also thinking that this might be a Lynch syndrome family, so throw in the Lynch genes. And, and it's the customizability of, of some of the panels. And Vitae is one of the companies that has a, a really nicely customizable panel. There, there are other companies, obviously, that, that offer those types of things as well. Um, and it, it is you know, very helpful to be able to adjust things based on, on the characteristics of, of the family history and the patient's individual uh, personal history. The important thing about genetic testing as we enter an era when there's going to be a lot more genetic testing is that there isn't one test that covers everybody under every circumstance that you're always going to reach for. Any more than in most things in medicine, there's one test that everybody needs or gets. So when we talk about managing patients with our genetics counselors and our specialists in hereditary breast cancer, the first thing we want to think about is what exactly are we looking for? If you're talking to a patient whose mother had BRCA1 and she wants to know what her risk of hereditary cancer is, all you have to do is a narrow window test for BRCA1, and if it's negative, you have the information you need. Then there are other families where there might be different clusters of genes, and again, you can tailor the evaluation for them based on the family history, the kinds of cancers that are arising in that family, and what other genetic information is already known. More and more, uh, as more women get tested, there is circulating information in the family record in the chart about where these mutations might be, uh, and that can obviously guide it. Now, there are still situations where you simply don't know, but you think there is a strong family history of uh, cancer, and, but you don't know where the mutation uh, lies. And in those instances, we're going to be doing these multi-gene panels. They typically have about two dozen genes on them. There are several commercially available ones. And different health plans cover different insurances. Um, different uh, genetics teams have better working relationships with one product line than with another, such that they get faster turnaround on them. The technical quality for most of these seems to be actually very similar. And so what mostly matters is to make sure that you have access to high quality testing, that the team can work quickly with the genetics company to get the information back, and that the information is delivered in a way that everybody understands the technical details about what's being reported upon and what isn't. So I think one of the big things for treatment-related decisions that we've seen, uh, at least in my practice, is that I have a number of women with PALB2 mutations, a number of women with check mutations uh, that I found that I would not have found uh, if uh, we had been doing standard uh, single gene or, or, or double gene BRCA1, BRCA2 testing. Um, and I think that this has changed, at least offered to these women, um, certain screening uh, that we would not have had before. Um, I had a woman who elected to have a bilateral mastectomy uh, with a PALB2 mutation, and we explained to her um, the risks, uh, especially the New England Journal of Medicine paper that came out a few years ago, uh, and she chose to have a bilateral mastectomy, which was her choice. Uh, so clinical decisions are being made now uh, with these multi-gene panels. Uh, and again, I think that if we're going to make a clinical decision uh, with these panels, uh, we need to be uh, as sure as we can be uh, that the mutation is actually something that's pathogenetic uh, and is potentially actionable. The advice for community-based physicians on which test to start with really begins with the history of the woman or the patient who you're talking with at that time. If there is a family history that is already known, if there's a specific mutation that's already identified within the family, then you start with that work. So you might start with BRCA1 or BRCA2. If the families of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry or Eastern European ancestry and there's a much more li greater likelihood of having a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, again, that's where you would begin. If the patient has a family history and is already known to be BRCA1 or 2 negative, or if there isn't reason to imagine that it's part of that syndrome, then you're going to cast a wider net right away. And that's when people begin reaching for uh, the uh, uh, multi-gene panels uh, out of the box. And that's been a very efficient way to guide the genetic testing. My own personal bias is to start with a bigger panel. 
um, because again, you can get, you never know what's going to happen five years from now, and at least you have the genetic data there. I mean, the data is the data. Once you do a genetic panel on somebody, especially in the germline, it doesn't change. And um, you have that data. When new information comes out, you can always go back to that. And of course, you want to deal with a company that stores the data, uh, and then will also kind of potentially contact you, or you can contact them uh, when new variants and new mutations uh, are discovered. Um, I think my advice to community oncologists uh, is to not use these willy-nilly. These are very powerful tools. Um, I think that uh, if possible, uh, either through uh, a virtual consult or a direct consult, uh, use these uh, with someone with genetics expertise, especially in trying to interpret the variants of unknown significance. I think that that's very, very important. We don't want to um, make a clinical decision uh, based on a variant uh, that we really don't know uh, causes disease. I mean, and we just don't know. There's a lot that's unknown uh, with these tests. And I think that, again, my advice to community oncologists is uh, the data is the data, and more data is always better than less most of the time. But uh, if you don't have the expertise the really uh, to interpret the actual mutations, it's very, very important to try uh, to get either a virtual consult or an actual consult uh, with either a genetic counselor or someone who understands the genetics. Um, and those are always available. I mean, I think that if they can't consult in person, I think most you know, organizations uh, have people that are available to discuss these mutations with. So there are many support services for physicians and for patients, uh, both from uh, the actual companies that um, provide the testing, uh, as well as national organizations. Um, ASCO uh, has uh, a variety of resources online, both for patients uh, and physicians. Uh, the American uh, Society for Human Genetics uh, has a lot of web-based resources, both for physicians and for patients. Um, but I wouldn't discount your local or your regional um, uh, academic uh, oncology facility. Uh, most places in the country uh, do have a comprehensive cancer center that's fairly close by. The vast majority of these comprehensive cancer centers do have genetics expertise uh, that could be available for you. Um, a lot of the bigger practices even, uh, bigger non-comprehensive cancer centers um, around the country do have uh, resources. But again, I think it's very important both for the patient and the physician uh, to, um, if they don't have the expertise in trying to analyze some of these variants, uh, to really involve these resources early on uh, in the decision.